Hello and welcome. I'm your host here, Carlos Juarez for Global Connections. And joining me today, I've got two guests that are going to help us unravel a fascinating story of what it's like to work, travel, uh, study abroad. Uh, these are two young leaders that are with me now here in Mexico. Uh, they've come from far away, one from Australia, one from England. Uh, and so I want to thank me. Uh, Freya and Ella are both joining me today. Thank you and welcome to Global Connections. Thanks great, for having us. It's great to have you. And, you know, uh, it's an opportunity. I want to uh, I call it something like, you know, study abroad in Mexico. But in this case, you are both foreign students from different parts of the world. Yes. Uh, and so an opportunity for us to talk about some of the, you know, interesting, challenging, exciting things, uh, some of the hurdles you had to go through to mm -hmm. get here. Uh, but first, uh, let me just briefly have you share a few words. Uh, Freya, tell us a little bit about yourself. You're joining us here from uh, Sydney, Australia. Yes. Uh, and tell us uh, briefly, you know, what is your, maybe your area of study where your, yeah. where your home yeah. institution is? Well, I study at the University of Technology, Sydney. Mm -hmm. um, we have a picture Sydney. here we're going to show right now, uh, UT, UTS. Yes, UTS for sure. Um, I was born and raised in Sydney, okay. um, but have traveled a lot. Um, so moved to the States for a year when I was about 12. Um, I've traveled all of my life, so very mm -hmm. used to and very much like traveling. Yeah. Um, so I was very excited by this opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I study a Bachelor of Global Studies. Okay. So it's yeah. kind of fitting. It fits um, in. So you've got a semester that you're spending abroad. Yes, absolutely. You get a semester allocated to exchange. Excellent. And so here we are. You've made it all the way from Sydney to all the way. Little San Andres, Cholula, sí. Puebla, New Mexico. <laughs> 12,000 kilometers away. In, in the heart of Mexico, kind of east of Mexico City. Uh, yes. And, uh, We'll talk more about some of those impressions and maybe some, you know, interesting aspects that you can about uh, your experience so far. Uh, but let's turn now. And Ella, tell us a little about yourself, Ella. You're, you're coming to us from England, but uh, yeah. where is your home and what do you, what is it you're studying? So I study international development at mm -hmm. home okay. um, at the University of East Anglia, which is in Norwich. Mm -hmm. um, I'm doing a year here. So it's like an additional year to my course. Oh, okay. um, so it doesn't, it's not graded, but it's like I'm, my... My degree will be international development with a year abroad. Oh, um, so it kind of shows that I've studied yes. somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, well, thank you. And, and this is East Anglia, which is in sort of southeastern England, mm -hmm. uh, roughly, or, or let's say the eastern coast. But your home is uh, where? In the Midlands? Uh, yeah, in the Midlands. Okay. Gosh, uh, lots of hills. Yeah. Really beautiful. So whereas, uh, Freya, you, you're studying in your own home city, although yes. I just mentioned yeah. a global traveler yourself, but uh, you've come from central Sort of midlands of England to East Anglia, uh, mm -hmm. and that itself is an adjustment because it's not your, you know, your home. But yeah. of course, what really brings us together, and, and I want to talk about that, this opportunity. Uh, global connections is a really a dialogue we have about you know different experiences, global issues. Sometimes it's maybe expert opinion on this or that. But really, uh, what I enjoy is more people stories. You know, you here you are undergoing an experience that, without mm -hmm. a doubt, is a life changing one. You're studying in a place outside of your normal comfort zone. Uh, and that presents challenges, opportunities. Mm -hmm. Now, both of you, for having made this decision, obviously have some spark, some interest. Uh, I would, you know, as a college professor many years, I mean, if I had my way, I would say, especially students, so the things you're studying about, global studies, development, mm -hmm. you really have to get yeah. out there, you know, smell the flowers, get engaged. Uh, you can only do so much from yeah, the textbook. Yeah, one thing to read, um, but a whole and, different. And it also reflects, again, we live in a more globalized world than ever, more mobility. I mean, your parents and grandparents, it's a different era. And, mm. and there was some mobility 30, 40 years ago, not as much, but certainly 50, 100 years ago, people didn't leave their, you know, their zones of, of comfort. Uh, but you are, and you're part of, I think, a, a new generation of, of, of global citizens kind of tr you know, transcending borders. Uh, mm. I want to maybe turn now and just give me, uh, you know, as a way of understanding what some of your first impressions, uh, you took this big leap. Uh, it's part of your study, which is also very important. Mm. But it's also a life experience. But as you made this long trek, Australia, Mexico, different worlds, yeah. different, different realities. What, what were some Absolutely. first impressions that you can share? Um, I would say the people are world friendlier here. Um, as soon as I arrived, mm -hmm. people were just extremely, extremely friendly. <laughs> and it was quite interesting because of the perceptions that lots of people have about Mexico being this incredibly dangerous place and blah, 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 blah. Um, lots of people were really surprised when I said, oh, I'm going to study in Mexico for this like, semester. I'll see you in six months. Uh, they just finished watching the Narcos series yeah, exactly. on, uh, on Netflix. And they're like, exactly. why would you do that? But so, obviously, I think this yeah. is one of the first lessons. That obviously, you need to go see the world exactly. is a much more complicated and, and there are many features, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so, so initially, the people were just absolutely, and still are absolutely mm -hmm. lovely. And um, Puebla is beautiful, and especially Cholula. Yeah. Um, and I flew directly into 
Bubba, so mm. I can go to Mexico City first. Okay. Mm. So I haven't experienced what's supposed to be this grand sort ah. of cosmopolitan yeah, yeah, city yeah. yet. Of course. Um, but all I've seen of Bubba and Chihuahua so far yeah. has just been yeah. this incredible kind of interaction between the people, yeah. the foreigners yeah. and the locals. It's really yeah. nice. And we'll talk more about, again, maybe some of the, the reality is that there are many Mexicos in this case, just as you might say Australia. Yeah. Somebody went to study in Perth or in Cairns yeah. or, you know, any other city, there's a different sort of subculture yeah, there. Uh, and let me ask you, Ella, to give us a, just a quick snapshot, some of your initial impressions and, and, and even maybe it will continue with, with you as well, Freya, but what, what, it is, what was it that inspired you to come to Mexico? Did you have an interest for some mm. reason or just roll the dice? Mm. Um, I've traveled quite a bit everywhere mm -hmm. and so but i've never been to like the states to mm -hmm. like latin american countries or anything mm -hmm. also wanted to learn a new language mm -hmm. and uh this uni was like one of the only that, I, that I would yeah give that yes. possibility okay. whereas everywhere else is all in english mm -hmm. um and yeah so somewhere i've never been before somewhere yeah. i could learn a language Change somewhere up. really far away <laughs> um, and yeah i thought that also like the people that would go to Mexico would be yeah. similar to me and yes. okay. yeah and um, I don't know if we had a chance to show it but in addition you know we had some pictures of your university there in, in England University of East Anglia yeah. uh, as well just the, the sheer distance in the map that shows us uh, you know you've come a long way as well yeah. uh, now interestingly here uh, you know Puebla is uh, on one hand it's a provincial city a couple of hours east mm -hmm. of Mexico City and it's a pretty sizable uh, one uh, Two, three million people i don't know the exact figure but mexico city the other megalopolis that uh, yeah. is not so far away is of course a big global international city on one hand but also a mecca for you know a lot of centralized power and culture and you know it's, it's a just a big big uh, thing in itself but i want to tell you that your opportunity to come and visit and stay and live and study in this provincial city and we're kind of in a more of a smaller town outside yeah. of the city uh, kind of gives you, I think, a, a, a better immersion into the culture in some ways. Yeah. You're not negotiating the, the world of a mega city. You, years ago, had spent a year in yeah. New York City, yeah. right? Uh, right? And, so. you know, Sydney's a big cosmopolitan yeah. city as well, but I always get a sense it's somehow more connected to nature on one hand, yeah, um, and you have a vast country and territory behind that. Um, in your case, you know, England, uh, it, it's a mixture. You have obviously cities and then where you come from in the Midland, some urban areas that are not far, but then you're also very close to nature yeah. and the outdoors, right? Especially where I, like my uni yeah, is yeah. like very close to. Even yeah, close to the like, ocean. And it's as smaller well. as well. Yeah. Quite okay. similar to, yeah. Yeah, maybe. interesting. And, yeah. you know, here I wanted to maybe um, real quick we hit this concept. We often hear the term culture shock, and it happens to all of us, even if we are going short term, traveling someplace out of our comfort zone, confronting challenges. Uh, it's a very normal thing. You have to know that and, and, and obviously go through the steps and steps and processes, but it, it can happen to any of us. Uh, again, if you're like you're doing an extended stay, sometimes, you know, the initial few weeks can be the honeymoon. It's exciting. And then maybe at some point you either <laughs> confront some anxiety or some issue that you don't understand or frustrates yeah. you. And why? Why this? Why that? Uh, any examples that come to yeah, mind? It's really interesting that you said that because about two weeks ago, um, Ella and I were both talking about how we were just feeling this really strange sense of that's real now. Like yes, yes. it's been a month and a bit. We're actually no, getting on with it. How have we gone yeah. through this many weeks of university? And then we start to speak to some of our other international friends and they say, it's really weird because we've started to feel that way as well. <laughs> and it was the same way. Yeah. Everyone started to feel the same way about it finally kind of hitting you that it's yeah. not just, oh, I'm here at this fantastic university and yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's yeah. like, because oh. it is initially, there's like an exciting euphoria, I call yeah. it the honeymoon, and, and it's also everything is new and different. Yeah. Pretty soon you've now got routines, you're, 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 you're yeah. solving yeah. basic tasks, you've you got places, you know, where you shop, where Absolutely. you eat, where you, you know, go to. Friends. Uh, what Friends, yeah. other, are there any other examples of maybe when we use culture shock, it can mean different Spanish. things. Uh, Spanish. Yeah. Spanish. In other words, like, having to deal with the language issue itself. Yeah. yeah, I think in my head, I was like, I, I live with a Mexican girl as well, it's just me and her. So I thought that I don't know, I just thought like, oh, it, I, I would just be speaking Spanish, like I'll pick up like bits all the time and it will just be a lot easier and it's taken, and then I have the stress of people being like, well, just try, just like, just try and speak. But if I don't know, know the, word, yes. the words, yeah. like, I can't, yeah. I don't know, and, and I can't. I mean, in, in, of course it can vary, but in your own cases, 
how much background Spanish did you have a semester? I had two, uh, three semesters. Three semesters. Yeah. And yourself? I had a semester. Uh, one actually, semester. Yeah. Then you really are arriving yeah. in a crash course uh, yeah. uh, for survival of uh, yeah. language skills quickly. Uh, mm -hmm. And well, that can always be a challenge, of course. Exactly. But I also think, as Ellen mentioned before, um, all of the people, well, most of the people we've met here, have all been like-minded people because I think it takes a certain kind of person to one, go, want to go on exchange, yeah. and two, come to a country like Mexico instead of go yeah. somewhere that's got a sense of familiar yeah, familiarity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think with the Spanish thing, you've got a certain kind of person that's willing to learn and willing to try and make mistakes and be corrected mm -hmm. and that sort yeah. of thing. So yeah. it's been a challenge, and there's been many times <laughs> where I've literally just been like, I have no idea what you're saying. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's also been like, subconscious learning things yes. that now I just I've picked up vocabulary and different yeah. words so yeah. it's I mean, been it, a shock but a good one it is there's no substitute to having to literally learn the language for survival purposes yeah. and that may be just practical <laughs> things readings yeah. asking instructions reading a menu whatever it yeah. might be uh, those are some of the hurdles that you have to deal talking, with now the best yeah. is talking to uber drivers talking to uber drivers has because been the like, best oh, way they, like lots of, lots of them can't speak English, any English. 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 And then you have to explain and then yeah. they'll ask you questions because they want to know where you're about from, you, what yes. you're yes. So you, yeah. what you develop, I'm sure, over time is you've got some strategies. Knowing that, you need to know how to <laughs> yeah. explain the instructions. Or how oh, absolutely, yep. Yeah. We'll have a certain that. sentence that you yeah. rehearse because yeah. you've asked someone, but then yes. they, ask, they answer in a different way. It's like, oh. Well, those are some, <laughs> no of the, some of the interesting <laughs> things. And beyond that, anything that's been more, I don't know, like, very surprising. You didn't expect and anticipate anything that stands out. Nothing that's no. to mind is like extremely oh, steady. Okay. University. Oh, the amount of the different. Different norms, yeah. different procedures. <laughs> the biggest thing. Absolutely. At home for me, um, three subjects is a full time course load. Yeah. Here I'm studying five. Five. Oh. Class every I'm day. here every day. I only am at uni two days a week at home. Ah. Um, and the amount of times you have a class a week is triple than what you have at home. Mm -hmm. um, so it is a lot of work, mm -hmm. a lot of homework, um, and just a lot of socializing while trying to work. And, yeah, yeah, so you're, you're juggling a lot to, more things. You're trying so to like busy. socialize to make friends because you're new and you don't know anyone. Plus learn a language, yes. so you're like constantly like, oh, your spare time, like, we need to practice some Spanish. Mm -hmm. Also, we need to travel while we're here. Yeah, we yeah. need to travel on the weekends. And yes. then you have assignments mm -hmm. every single week, which in like our home countries, you'd have of, yeah. an assignment at the end of the semester and an exam at the end of the semester. Ah, and you'd yeah. be given a couple weeks to like... There. Well, I'm going to have to eliminate any assignments for the rest of you for your <laughs> Thank class. Thank you. <laughs> you were first. Yes. Yeah. Four, four weeks in. No, but assignment. I did enjoy that assignment, I will say, as opposed to some of my other assignments. Well, again, and that's one of the times I myself have uh, been able to experience a lot of opportunities teaching and, and do teach regularly at different places, the U.S. and Europe and Asia and Latin America. And the norms do vary quite a bit. Yeah. I think you all know, two years ago, I was in uh, India for about six months and came to realize that after the second uh, class, it was entirely optional to show up. So I had 60 students, wow. but by the second week, 20, 15 or 20 would show up. Yeah, okay. And I had this list, and then suddenly I had an exam in the middle, and everybody showed up. I'd never seen them, and it was like, oh, welcome to the class. Uh, different norms, different uh, it's the same expectations. The I don't have to, there's no register. If I don't want to go, I don't go, but it means that it's hard. I have you to miss do it. extra work for the yeah. exam. So again, this is the challenge, and not only, let's say, from something like your studies right now, but the same if you're doing business or somehow in the future dealing with, negotiating with, yeah. you know, there are different norms, different you know, work habits and strategies, Absolutely. and you've got to basically learn that. Well, let me uh, suggest a short break right now. It's a great opportunity to unravel some of this. As we come back in a moment, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about some of the travels, travail, some of the challenges, uh, but also how study abroad is a life-changing uh issue and, and you may not know it just yet we'll mm -hmm. talk about it a little more but uh let's take a short break right now we'll be back with more on the story right now after this short break hi i'm rusty Komori, host of beyond the lines i was the head coach for the punahou boys varsity tennis team for 22 years and we we're fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships this show is based on my book which is also titled beyond the lines and it's about leadership creating a superior culture of excellence achieving and sustaining success, and finding greatness. If you're a student, parent, sports or business person, and want to improve your life, 
and the lives of people around you. Tune in and join me on Mondays at 11 a.m. as we go beyond the lines on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Hello, I'm Mufi Hanneman. I want to tell you about a great show that appears on Think Tech Hawaii. It's all about tourism. In fact, we call it Tourism 101, where we talk about the issues and challenges that faces our number one industry throughout the state. We'll have some interesting guests, some very informative dialogue, and allow you an opportunity to maybe learn a little bit more about why this industry is so important for our state. It's been great for us in the past. We need it today, and especially going forward. That's Tourism 101 on Think Tech Hawaii. Mahalo. Aloha and welcome back. Welcome to Global Connections. I'm your host, Carlos Juarez, and I'm joined today by two young leaders, two young women who are studying abroad currently in Mexico. Uh, Freya McKenzie comes to us from Sydney, Australia, uh, and Ella Selby is from England, from the United Kingdom. Uh, soon to be free from that. Uh, no, 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 let's hold off on that. Uh, that's a separate uh, story. We'll, we'll try to unravel uh, the, the, the drama that's unfolding in Britain, both uh, its politics and the whole uh, Brexit saga. But more importantly, we're here because you know you've made this leap of faith. You've you've, you've made this a tremendous venture. Um, I'm a you know big fan of obviously global education, global learning. I'm a world traveler like you are. Uh, but sometimes uh, there are things that. Uh, uh, we don't usually appreciate right away, um, and that is you come here and you're opening up your world and learning about a new place, new language, new people. But also, I can tell you that the experience of traveling and studying and working abroad reorients your values, or maybe to put it differently, you go back and you'll never quite be the same person. Yeah. Uh, also, you might begin to think carefully about things that you thought were important back home or things you didn't realize were important. Uh, have you had anything like that, uh, things that you miss or things that you thought were important that maybe aren't or... How would you say your experience has been? Um, to be brutally honest, I think you come across some friendships that you thought that you valued so dearly at home. Mm -hmm. And then once you're actually here and, like we said before, you've got so much on your plate, yeah. you really prioritise yes, um, yes. who and what's really important back home mm -hmm. um, because you've got to sort of balance. Yeah, and it's a different time zone. How many, how many 15, hours? So um, 15, out there, 15 hours ahead. And, and it's like basically like the future in exactly. effect because Australia is right there at yeah. the tail end of the, exactly. of the time zone. And the time is just... It makes it very hard to really communicate. Yeah. It's a different world. It's, it's really hard. Uh, but I think in saying that as well, I've yeah. learned to... This is my first time living out of home as well. Mm -hmm. So because my university is quite close to my actual home and mm -hmm. it's extortionately expensive to live at yeah, anywhere in Sydney, yeah, yeah. So, um, most people live at home yeah. while they study. Yeah. Um, so this is my first time living away from my parents mm -hmm. um, and my sister who I'm really sure. close with. Um, You're on your own. So so I think you have a new sister, exactly, a new friend. Yeah, yeah, yes, sister. Yes, so yes, I think that you really gravitate towards mm -hmm. the people that you hold really similar values to, sure, um, which sure. has been really nice. And you, you just make kind these of friendships really, really quickly because you're forced to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I've just learned to just grow up. I think yeah. I've had to. I've you had don't to have time it. to stop and think about it. I don't have know? time. To, I don't have time to. I don't. I can't call my mom and say, yeah, "How yeah. do I do this?" Because she's fast asleep. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, I've just realized who and what's really important. Yeah. And is there anything you miss? Uh, you need some Vegemite or I something? I brought Vegemite. Oh, okay. I brought Tim Tams and I brought <laughs> Milo. Um, yeah. well, I think out, I just yeah. miss um, the accessibility to beaches all the time. I didn't realize mm -hmm. that I went to a beach yeah. every single day at home. Yeah, yeah, so it's yeah. right in my here, doorstep. There's no beach here. Sure. But I've learned to kind of appreciate other things mm -hmm. in nature and yeah, other yeah. things with a close proximity. And, and it's not the end of your life here forever. In other words, oh, you're exactly. here for a short chapter, and yeah. so you have to change the canal and, and, and basically uh, make the most of what you have. Exactly. And uh, tell me about yourself. I mean, what are any things uh, that uh, you've thought about uh, different or, or maybe that you miss uh, from, from your old world? or, yeah. or Different to Freya. Like, I've not lived at home for like four years. Mm -hmm. I had a year abroad and then I had half a year abroad mm -hmm. and then I had uni for two years. So I've kind of got used to more independent by now. Extremely independent. Yes. Like I love like living mm -hmm. independently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um I found it quite difficult so far. Like I love having like structure to my life and I love having a job mm -hmm. and having things that like a good routine. A good routine. Yes. And slowly but surely like I'm what we're at Eight weeks. I'm eight, eight weeks, weeks now, which is insane and to think about. 
I'm starting to be like, right, I know what's going on. Yeah. I know who my mates are, who I'm going to call, who I'm going to walk with, <laughs> what we're going to do, what we're gonna yeah. where I'm going to go this weekend. Yeah. So it's, but it's, it takes time. It really does. And it's that realization that like, okay, it's fine. You're not okay today, but another week. Yeah. And like you feel so much more comfortable. Another week, you feel so much more yeah. comfortable. And then in, in the end, like everything in life, you, you develop new routines, new yeah. tasks yeah. that you do, and, and that you've got to keep yourself busy. And like Absolutely. you've already said, you've got multiple things happening at once, and that can be <laughs> overwhelming. Uh, but it also doesn't give you enough time to stop and think. Exactly. Uh, uh, of course, you've got to say yes, yes. and do it. Yeah. Yeah. I was just saying to Ella, I think I've been exhausted for eight weeks, but yeah. it's just like. So go, go. Well, yeah, and um, now the other is uh, you've got obviously now uh, to appreciate that uh, you're developing new norms, new or new awareness. Um, you're also um, quickly learning how to convey to people, and and you both come from, on one hand, similar worlds, being you know what they are, maybe if you want to call it the first world or the English speaking mm -hmm. world. Uh, Australia and, and, and England are obviously worlds apart, but there's also a connection there. There are some shared values. There's a, uh, an ability. <laughs> That's right. The same <laughs> queen. But, but beyond that, uh, I guess what I'm really getting at here is that you are also uh, suddenly in a different world here. And, and, and this world in Mexico is curious. It, it, it's a paradox. Mm -hmm. It's old. It's new. It's uh, you know connected, but it's also very provincial and closed. Uh, it's rich because there's a lot of rich, although it's very concentrated mm -hmm. and, and also, uh, you know, uh, deeply, deeply, you know, disparity. So you have a large population that's poor by standards of, you know, your home countries. I mean, uh, what what could you offer by way of just some quick impressions of what you've seen now in Mexico? You talk about the warmth of the people, and that's one aspect about the culture and society. There are other aspects that can be either challenging or frustrating mm -hmm. or maybe surprising. I mean, the Mexican culture, society, how, how have uh, you experienced it? The environmental aspect. I want to recycle and things like yeah. that because yeah. it's just like the norm that I would and and and, and, and you feel bad because it's this whole like well I do it at home and you know but actually that so so adjusting to that yeah. uh, adjusting that's been hard because um, you come from being at home where it's just the norm you've got your recyclable water bottle or you've got your reusable water bottle and you've got all this stuff. Um, to sort of help you along the way and then obviously you can't bring all that stuff in a suitcase because you've got one suitcase for six months yeah. um, and then you actually realize after a few days you're like what's the thing I just used yeah, yeah. and there's one bin on Caeta Dorte um, along the whole thing uh, and it's not a recycling bin and it's just also yeah kind of getting ahead around that yeah um, has been and like not quite interesting and, and it's like making sure that just because we're from this western world and this richer world that you don't have this kind of superiority yeah. and like kind of oh, well, we're Absolutely. better than you because we recycle. Yeah. And it's been kind of, I, I've noticed myself, like in my house with my Mexican flatmate, like, can, can we like do this? Or, mm. and, and you just have to kind of take a step back and mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, well, it is, that's one of the challenges. And again, you, what you'll see, of course, there's a wide range of variations. Mexico City has some areas that have perhaps mm. closer to what you're used to, sorting and, yeah. and facilities and the like. Uh, the same with other urban areas. Uh, it just depends. It's a function of where you might be at a given yeah. time. And the fact that Mexico, again, it, it has a wide range and variety of, of levels of development of, of, of that. Like Now, one thing I, I think if, if you could share with us, I know, uh, you know this past week there's been a lot of attention in the, in, well, uh, with the bringing together of world leaders at the UN General Assembly. But even more than that, the recent climate change yes. protest uh, movement, a, a very strong and, and widespread universal one uh, that we've seen in many places in yeah. Australia and Europe. Uh, and both of you had an opportunity here uh, to jump skip into your, yeah. skip uh, your class, skip class and, and make it into what, you know, basically an organized uh, of sorts of uh, uh, protest movement here yeah. last Friday. Tell us a little bit about well, what was it like and what were your I guess, impressions about it? Uh, you went to Puebla. Uh, yes, where, where there we was, did. Um, uh, we went into Puebla and it was a group called Fridays for Future. Mm -hmm. um, and it was organized and run by a group of really, really passionate young um, Mexican people yeah, yeah. and it was absolutely phenomenal to see 
how young but passionate they were. Mm -hmm. Um, confident and really confident and there wasn't a whole lot of us there wasn't 400,000 in Australia and there mm -hmm. wasn't hundreds of thousands like in yeah. the UK so it was a small group but exactly it was a, a small group but it was a really passionate mm -hmm. and yeah. driven group yeah. and we walked and we walked and we walked mm -hmm. to different buildings demanding people come out and sign the petition uh -huh. and half the time we had no idea what we were chanting because <laughs> it was all in Spanish <laughs> so yeah. it was a really nice vibe and it was really nice to see that um being away from home, things that our friends are doing mm -hmm. at home, we can still participate yeah, in all this yeah. global movement. So and, and it may be a smaller scale because it's exactly. for different but reasons here in Mexico, but, but it's, it, it's a reflection of even the interconnectedness of the world exactly. because this movement is also reflecting and, and building on what's happening elsewhere. Uh, this young uh, you know, Greta Thunberg, the young exactly, Swedish uh, yeah. uh, girl who has mobilized a lot of focus on this. Uh, and here in Mexico, of course, this is a new young generation that's also experienced a, a lot of change and transformation in Mexican society. Yeah. The politics has come under a lot of challenge and change. Uh, the economics are always a, a challenge there. Why is such stark poverty and inequality, mm -hmm. the injustice? So there's a lot for people here to mobilize about and try to yeah. improve. Uh, but it's also, again, reflecting maybe the, the global world that we all live in. You reflected in your own mobility, your decision to study abroad. But even with Mexico and, and where we are here in Puebla, again, it's a provincial city, but it has its own very strong links to the global economy. There are large, Absolutely. large uh, factories here that produce. Uh, Another uh, thing, when we've mm -hmm. got here, Volkswagens, every second car was a Volkswagen. <laughs> and I was like, what's going on here? And then someone said second largest, largest manufacturer yes. in the world. I was like, oh, uh, it's, interesting. It's a massive factory that's been here some 40 years, and I believe today it employs 15,000 people mm -hmm. uh, the local factory. There's a recent Audi factory that opened as well that assembles. Yeah. And this, of course, Mexico and its interdependent, particularly with the U.S., uh, has seen the growth of this uh, automotive industry tremendous in the last 20, 25 years. Yeah. Uh, the Volkswagen plant that's here has been here for quite a long time and exports a lot to different parts of Latin America, at different times even to Europe. Uh, mm -hmm. I think today probably less, but the United States certainly is another major uh, place for that. Uh, but here again, maybe what it also speaks to, and uh, you know, well, well, this is a place that's somewhat uh, provincial, if you want to call it that. It's always had a connection to Europe in different ways, and, and especially from Germany with these investments. Mm -hmm. But France has also been a major player. Mm -hmm. uh, many oh, of you nice may know that uh, there's a classic uh, holiday, the Cinco de Mayo. It's mm -hmm. uh, celebrated uh, more in the U.S. curiously than here. Yeah. Here, it's commemorated as a battle, which was a, a, a famous battle when the French forces were coming to Mexico and trying to overthrow and establish a regime. It was a famous battle here in the 1860s, uh, May 5th. Uh, but I say that in part because even at the end of the 19th century, early 20th century, you had large waves of European immigrants. Yeah. Uh, many who came here and, and established textile firms and, and other types yeah, of factories. You can really notice it when you go into the um, historic center of Puebla. Mm -hmm. You can really see the kind of ghosts of colonization. Yes, yes, of um, course. Through the architecture. Everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere, yeah. everywhere yeah. we've just seen. Yeah, and those are, again, uh, pretty, when you see that, you can see that this was a pretty significant, you know, part of the colonial empire, the Spanish so, empire, yeah. uh, and they've managed to preserve that, including here in Puebla. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, Free and Ella, I, I think we're going to have to bring closure to our brief mm -hmm. chat. Uh, maybe we can continue next time and, and get some more reflections That's on so something cool. else as, as before you leave back home. But I want to thank you both for the opportunity to share some of your impressions, some of your thoughts about this. I, I commend you both for your, this big uh, decision uh, because it will change you forever. Uh, you develop contacts that you'll know, uh, lifelong friends, but you'll also go back to your world and, and sort of have a, a, a different perspective uh, and, and be both yeah. more and independent. Hope you'll be speaking, yes. speaking a lot more Spanish, of yes. Course, and you will. Uh, well, that brings the closure to our uh, program today. I'm your host, Carlos Juarez, here on Global Connections. Uh, and again, just uh, an opportunity to hear some young leaders share their own insights, uh, reflecting the new global citizens that they are studying abroad from Australia and England here in Mexico. Uh, with that, we'll close and we look forward to having you join us on our next episode of Global Connections. Mm -hmm.